You might be afraid of heights if you look down. I told you not to look down. <laughs> Are you recording me? Yes. Stop. See it there? See the little lizard? No.
in our Sun 12 does our winery where you can take a free wine tasting tour. Pick out their 12 ordering wines. They also make a great juice there for the younger ones. Oh, what? Then we have another free museum right downtown at the west end of the plaza called the Governor's House Museum, which is conveniently located right across the street from Stop 14. Now we're pulling into our Stop 1 and I'll explain to you guys where everything is located. Uh, right there at the back of the parking lot, that salmon colored building, that is our old jail. And then this building right here to our right, that is our old historic museum. And then ahead to our left there, that is our Gator Bob's Trading Post, where you'll find our public restrooms and also that complimentary museum. But now if you look here to the right, you'll see one of our trolleys pulled in. This is where the trolleys pull in and where you guys are going to want to go. You're going to want to go around to the back side of the trolley depot, because that's where the queue line forms. And then when you're ready to come back, right here at this front corner here, that is where our dispatcher sits at the podium. So just let him know when you're ready to come back, if I'm not already here waiting for you. Also what you guys can do is, because I'll be pulling up right here to this stop every 15 minutes this afternoon. So if you guys, when you're ready to go back, just wait here right here in the... The fun part with that old birdcage starts about right over here because they'll drag it over here, they'll tie a rope on it, toss it over that big old branch up there. Cool. Then they're going to raise you up about 15 feet in the air. All right? And the town folks just love to come by and laugh and point. Tee hee and giggle, make fun of that. Any mistake about it, we are a hanging jail. There's been eight hangings right here. The last one was a friend of mine, Charlie Powell. Just a couple of months ago, back in February 1908. Welcome back, y'all. Well, he wasn't a criminal. He was just a married man. And he loved his wife. But there was an evil man in town spreading ugly rumors about that woman, and Charlie just didn't like that at all. In fact, he did what any self-respecting husband would do. He found that man sitting in a saloon one night, pow, shot him dead right in front of everybody. Well, the sheriff arrested old Charlie, took him before the judge, and the judge said, guess what, Charlie? Kill a man in Florida, Florida's going to kill you right back. So they put him right there in that cell. That there is our death row. And we have a little thing, a work release program going on around here. Convicts, you get to work for about 30 days and build your own gallows. And then you get the quick release at the end, if you follow what I'm saying. So on Charlie's big day, it's a public execution. There's about 350 folk out here, and the sheriff's a happy man because he gets to charge admission, and it's election season. And he wants he wants to get reelected, so he wants folks to see that he's doing a good job and get reelected. Yeah. So at their point in time, he says, "Definitely go get Charlie," and they go in there to get Charlie, and poor Charlie is passed out cold on the floor, completely unconscious. They don't know why. They kick him. That don't wake him up. They pour a bucket of water on him. That don't wake him up. The sheriff goes, well, we ain't going to wait all day for Charlie. Drag him out here. They drag Charlie out and they lay him right down there on the grass. Then he says, go get me a big old plank of wood. They go get a big old plank of wood. They bring it out here. They lay it down. They put Charlie on top of it and they tie him to that big old plank of wood. Because the thing about hanging, you have to do what's called stand before the noose. You have to stand up before you can get hung. Well, Charlie can stand up now. He's stiff in a pencil. He's got that big old plank of wood strapped to his back. He's still unconscious, though. They haul him up there. They put the noose around his neck. Well, Charlie ain't doing nothing. He is still unconscious. You know, and the sheriff goes, I don't think Charlie's going to wake up in time to say goodbye, so let's just go ahead and get it over with. The next thing you know, oh, now comes old Charlie. So with the extra weight of that big old plank of wood, he broke the rope, hit the ground, and passed out here in front of everybody. True story. Well, the doctor runs up and goes, well, he's still alive. His neck's broke, but I can see his eyes are flutter and he's still breathing. <laughs> well, by now, the women and children, they're running, they're screaming and all, and the men folk are standing around going, I ain't happy. I paid to see it hanging. Mm -hmm. The sheriff's going, ah, these are my boats. What am I going to do? Deputy, go get me another piece of rope. They're going to hang old Charlie twice. Well, luckily for Charlie, he expired before they ever came back with that second piece of rope. 
See, we got confiscated items over here if you want to see them. Graphic photos. I don't know what they mean by that. Confiscated by prisoners. They all either made or snuck that stuff in. Oh, wow. Someone likes to glorify guns over, you know, the majority of stabbings and whatnot. So, what else do you want to go see? I'm going to take one for you, one for me, and one for Brad. I'm going to be the lining in here. I need one. Here's one. Huh? And so that can read the little size from the seven cover drawing. So that can size read the last reporting is at 4.30. At 4.30, we need you to be at your nearest body stop. Wait for a body at 4.30. Unless you're already on a body. On the street here, half a mile behind us, is the Tura School for the Pacific Line. The school has been there since 1880. So the students have been there since 1880. And the game for the school center is there. We'll start in four of the 24 years. One of the most well-known students within that school was the station right now. Yes, right now, the Venice. Yep, he up here. 
We had right up here, it was Easter Sunday, 1513. At the time, most of them said they thought this was a huge island. He claimed this land here for Spain, he named this land Pascual Molina. Also known as La Molina for short. He named it at the Easter festival in Spain called Pascual de Flores. After that, there were Spanish attempts to form settlements here. But they all fell due to hurricanes, hostile natives, and insufficient for supplies. But the French were able to form a settlement here in front of us in present day Jacksonville. The French settlement was called Fort Caroline. Fort Caroline. And that angered the Spanish king because what's a French settlement doing in Apolita? And they're becoming a threat to these Spanish ships that were called on the east coast of Florida here. Spanish ships were Treasures from the America to Spain. Yep, the French here in Florida were attempting to set these Spanish ships outside our coast down our left in an attempt to steal the treasure from the Spanish ships. That's just one of the reasons why the Spanish king sent out Pedro Menendez along with troops and hundreds of Spanish colonists. They arrived here just a few months later, back there where I showed you earlier, at Fort St. Augustine. Just a few days after that, Pedro Menendez and his men were ready marching north to the middle of a hurricane. Two of the French saw that for Canada. They arrived safely and were able to capture and destroy the French settlement. They wiped the French settlement off the map of Florida. Two decades later, 1580s, due to massive pirate attack here in South America, by Sir Francis Drake as 2,000 privateers, yet it was once here. The August ended up becoming a city surrounded by defensive walls, defensive borders. Once we get the green lights, I'm going to show you replicas of what the city's walls were at. Built 
August 2006. But that's what they named it. I think it's South Park. Right? Oh, there you go, that's better. 
Ed will give each of you the wax museum tickets at three dollars off the adult price for, for having body tickets. Yep. This is stop number three. Three sections of public restrooms and water fountains, three indoor malls, and a half full of attractions, which I'll tell you about in a moment. This is stop number four. If you want to get up here, we can go close to this, then off the back. Thank you, they even made with us. So here on St. George Street, you'll find attractions such as the Medieval Torture Museum, the oldest one's schoolhouse, Colonial Quarter, St. Colonial's Orthodox Street Shrine, the Spring, and the Governor's House. The Governor's House is a place museum of the architect. Don't know where we're going. Hey, let's see. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Unless you are a trolley already, at that time we need you to be at your nearest trolley stop. Wait for a trolley. Coming up on our right is the Siaka St. Look at us! Well, why are you in there? British company. Look at these. These are uh, how they navigated. Navigate by high seas. Jam, freaking boards, rocks, whatever. Whoa! Look at There's the little island of Puerto Rico. You should send a picture to your mom. Oh, that's an animation uh, cell.
about 12 years. How does that represent a turtle? Look at here. Where? What are you talking about? You're saying those figurines supposed to look like a turtle. They're so. Well, McDonald's looks to me. Yeah. Oh.